Hey, Benji Kaiser here, helping you out with five tips on how to maximize your time and create better efficiency using the Adobe InDesign type tool. Thanks for tuning in to this tutorial with Adobe InDesign on using the type tool. If you want to see some other tutorials coming out from me and this channel, just comment below right now saying you want to learn whatever within graphic design. Because that's why this channel exists. It exists to help you dominate the field of graphic design. So if you haven't subscribed yet, I would highly recommend doing so. I put out videos six days per week on graphic design, motivation, creativity, and tutorials just like this. So subscribe, hit the like button, and comment with any questions. For now, let's head on over to my screen and start saving you some time within Adobe InDesign. Hey, welcome on over to my screen here, and today I'm showing you five tips on how to use the type tool within InDesign correctly. Uh, a lot of times I come into documents and I'll see people do stuff that on a production standpoint does not work very well. So I'm gonna show you five tips on how to do this correctly, and some of them I'm gonna show you how you've possibly been doing them incorrectly and you need to stop and use these tips. So the first one I wanna look at is how I set up this document here. Now, a lot of times I see people who want to get bigger line spacing, so more letting between when you hit enter and paragraph down. And a lot of times what I'll see them do is this move here. They'll just hit enter, enter, and they'll just hit enter twice. The problem with that is you get a lot of inconsistencies, and it really starts to throw off the entire design. And as you see here, my paragraphs all match, they all go across very evenly. And how I did this is I come up here to the type tool. So what I'll do is I'll highlight this text. And you see I do have some enters here in order to make them line up. But what I've done in order to make sure that it's even is I typed in 0 .0625. And when I do that, it allows them to all space evenly. So watch when I remove this, they bounce down. So the nifty thing about this tool is it allows you to move your line spacing evenly rather than trying to finagle it and move it around with doing returns or spacing things over or anything like that. So that's tip number one. That's super helpful. Tip number two is this same technique except people do it a different way. I'm going to show you how not to do it. So let's go back here. We're going to highlight all this text really quick and we're going to pop this down back to zero. And a lot of times people like think that, okay, I just want to move this part down. I don't want to move it down a full space, so I don't want to, you know, move it down like that, but I just want to move it down a little bit. So what they'll do is they'll come here and they'll highlight this, and then they'll bump it down like this. And the problem is, is it's moving it out of its initial area, and then when you come back to edit this, if it's a long document, you're going to have really bad formatting issues. So avoid this, do not do this. Rather, do the tip that I just showed you, and that is bump it down with this, because that'll allow it to translate evenly. And better yet, we're just gonna go, and we're gonna add this here, back into our design, 0 0.025, and it's gonna even it out, and it'll look all kosher, which is great. The next tip that I have is how to create a quotation mark on the outside of a sentence structure, on the outside of a paragraph. I struggled with this for a long time, and I'm going to show you today how I was able to master this. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight this text, and we're going to bump it in, just like that. We're just going to click up in the up arrow when we click into this dialog box. Now that this one is offset, when we add a quotation mark, now you have a hanging quotation mark which is extremely helpful. It just makes it all look nice and even. Because if you didn't, and this was bumped back to zero, it just, it doesn't look as fluid. It, it looks off, honestly. So by doing this, you have a nice fluid line. All right, tip number three is creating a capital first letter to start your sentence. A lot of times when I was first starting out, and I hate to admit this, but I would just grab the first letter and I would just make it really big. And that's how I got it going. And you know what, it worked. And sometimes I would click in here and I would hold Alt and I would use my toggle keys and I would pull this in a little bit. 
And all things are cherry, and I thought that looked great. But the problem is you're messing up your editability. And that is super important in InDesign that you don't mess up the editing capabilities of your document. So we're going to Command-Z all that out because that's not how we're supposed to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to highlight this first text so we know that that's the one we're going to be working with. And we're going to do two. So we're going to move this up to two up here in the corner here. Super simple. That's all it takes. And now, if you want, you can actually do it in more places than just that. Every time you hit return, it will create a new version of your larger letter for the beginning of the sentence. Now, what if you don't want this to happen every time you hit return? Well, what you can do is you can hold shift, then click return. And what that will do is it will no longer bring the entry cap into more parts of your document. Tip number four is creating multiple paragraphs in one type box. Now normally you would think if you wanted to do something like this you would create one text box, another text box, and another text box. But up in your type settings you can actually create it to where it breaks it up into three separate paragraphs which is really nice. So we'll grab the type tool right here and we're going to click under paragraph settings right here. Now we go over to this section, number of columns. And you can increase or decrease the number of columns you're using within your design. And that's really helpful because you can just have one text box. It's really nice because now you can adjust this and try out different looks quickly and very evenly. So you can say, well, I want to try it in two columns, or maybe just one column. But isn't it amazing how it really sets a nice tone by having this in three separate columns? It breaks up the information very well. We're going to go to the type tool again. You can actually turn up and turn down the spacing between the columns. So say you want a wider space in between the columns, and you want a very narrow space between the columns. So you have all kinds of options here, and the great thing about this is you have all these options at your fingertips. You don't have to reconstruct your document every time you want to make changes. You can quickly test out your ideas live. And this makes it really helpful when designing because you're going to save time and you're going to have a more even creation. So the biggest thing with InDesign is making sure that all of your measurements are even and these are the tools that allow you to do so. Thanks for tuning in today for this tutorial within Adobe InDesign. Like I said, if you have any questions or you want some tutorials specifically suited to something that you're struggling with, comment below. I would love to help you out with that. Also, if you have found this video helpful, hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe. Come out with videos six days per week to help you out as a graphic designer. Also, before you go, Keep an eye out for my full course on becoming a graphic designer. This will be a paid course, but it's going to take you through the history of graphic design, the concepts and fundamentals, as well as the three applications you need in being a graphic designer, which is Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to this episode, and I'll catch you on the next one. I'm Benji Kaiser of BenjiKaiser.com.